Hello, boys and girls. We have a great story here, Red Riding Hood, which we've shared before, but by a different author. And this is James Marshall. We love James Marshall. Anytime I find a James Marshall book, I'm like, oh, I know this is going to be a treat. And I'm very excited to share it with you. Okay. Red Riding Hood. The illustrations are phenomenal. A long time ago, in a simple cottage, besides the deep, dark woods, there lived a pretty child called Red Riding Hood. She was kind and considerate, and everybody loved her. One afternoon, Red Riding Hood's mother called to her. Granny isn't feeling up to snuff today, she said. So I have baked her favorite custard as a little surprise. Be a good girl and take it to her, will you? Red Riding Hood was delighted. She loved going to Granny's, even though it meant crossing the deep, dark uh, woods. She loved going to Granny's, even though it meant crossing the deep, dark woods. When the custard had cooled, Red Riding Hood's mother wrapped it up and put it in a basket. Now, whatever you do, she said. Go straight to Granny's. Do not tarry. Do not speak to any strangers. Yes, Mama, said Red Riding Hood. Before long, she was in the deepest part of the woods. Ooh, she said. This is scary. Suddenly, a large wolf appeared. Good afternoon, my dear, he said. Care to stop for a little chat? Oh, gracious me, said Red Riding Hood. Mama said not to talk to any strangers. But the wolf had such charming manners. And where are you going, sweet thing? He said. I'm on my way to visit Granny, who lives in that pretty yellow house on the other side of the woods, said Red Riding Hood. She's feeling poorly, and I'm taking her a surprise. You don't say said the wolf. Just then he had a delightful idea. No reason why I can't eat them both, <laughs> he thought. Allow me to escort you, he said. You never know what might be lurking about. <laughs> you heard too kind, said Red Riding Hood. The size of the sunflowers. Beyond the forest, they came to a patch of sunflowers. Why not uh, pick a few, suggested the wolf. <laughs> Grannies love flowers, you know. 
<laughs> but while Red Riding Hood was picking a pretty bouquet, the clever wolf hurried on ahead to Granny's house. He's taking a nap. Who is it? Called out Granny. It is I, your delicious, er, darling granddaughter. <laughs> Said the wolf <clears throat> in his highest voice. The door is unlocked. Said Granny. Oh, no. Surprise, cried the wolf. Granny was furious at having her reading interrupted. Get out of here, you horrid thing, she cried. Hmm, what happened there? But the wolf gobbled her right up. He didn't even bother to chew. Tasty, he said, patting his belly. So tasty. Just then he heard footsteps on the garden path. Here comes dessert. <laughs> and losing no time, he put on Granny's cap and glasses, jumped into bed, and pulled up the covers. Who is it? He called out in his sweetest granny voice. It is I, your little granddaughter, said Red Riding Hood. The door is unlocked, said the wolf. Red Riding Hood was distressed at seeing her grandmother so changed. Why, Granny, she said, what big eyes you have. The better to see you, dear, said the wolf. And Granny, what long arms you have. The better to hug you, my dear. And Granny, what big teeth you have. The better to eat you, my dear. <laughs> Cried the wolf. Oh, man. He looks so full. After dinner... After dinner mints. And he gobbled her right up. I'm so wicked, he said. So wicked. But he really was enormously pleased with himself. And having enjoyed such a heavy meal, he was soon snoring away. A hunter passed by, was alarmed by the frightful racket. That doesn't sound like granny. He said. Oh. And so the brave hunter jumped in the window, killed the sleep. And so the brave hunter jumped in the window, killed the sleeping wolf, and cut him open. Out jumped Granny and Red Riding Hood. We're so ever grateful. Said Red Riding Hood. That wicked wolf won't trouble you again, said the hunter. It was so dark in there, I couldn't read a word, said Granny. Red Riding Hood promised never ever to speak to another stranger. Charming manners or not. And she never did. 
cool version by James Marshall, right? I absolutely love this story, and I've read so many. We shared so many of uh, Red Riding, but this one's by James Marshall. Let's switch over into Goodnight Goon. Um, this is a knockoff of the story of Goodnight Moon, where a boy is saying goodnight to um, his grandma and everything around them. But this is uh, with monsters, which I love to hear. This is a real quick read. Good night, Goon. And the illustrations are everything. In the cold gray tomb, there was a gravestone and a black lagoon and a picture of... Martians taking over the moon. And there were three little mummies rubbing their tummies. And two hairy claws and a set of jaws. And a loud screechy bat and a black hat. So cool. And a skull and a shoe and a pot full of goo. And a hairy old werewolf who was hollering. Good night, Tomb. Good night, Goon. Good night, Martians. Taking over the moon. Good night, Bones. And the Black Lagoon. Good night, Mummies. Good night, Tummies. Good night, Claws. And good night, Jaws. I think Jaws might be my favorite character in this book. So cool. Good night, moans, and good night, groans. Good night, screechy bat, and good night, hat. Good night, skull, and good night, shoe. Good night, creature. Good night, goo. And good night to the old werewolf hollering. Good night, you. Get under there. Good night, monsters. Everywhere. I love good night, goon. And of course, we shared Red Riding. And I hope you enjoyed them both, boys and girls. See you soon.